Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new drama with music, the story of Annie Laurie, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, lovely Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Drake. Yes, tonight, the world premiere of a new musical play is brought to you by the American Railroad, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. And thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Dorothy Warren Scholl will be a lass named Jean Amour, and I'll be Bobby Burns, the lad that wrote the sweet songs that Scotland and the world sing. So here's the new musical play by Lawrence and Lee, the story of Annie Laurie. He had been to Scotland, where the heather lies like a purple blanket on the heath. Where the lochs are silver teardrops in the valleys, and the mist is like a crown on the heathen hill. Or on a festive day, he have been to the marketplace of a country town. When lads are in their Sunday kilts, and the pipes are playing a tune that no lassie can resist. I that's for Scotland. The Scotland I love. Robert Bird! Why are you not dancing? I can't find me a lassie. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this one, there's not a lassie in Ayrshire when they come running if you ask them. Well, what's wrong with the music, Jamie? <laughs> you can, Robin. Every good bug bite's got the asthma. And you must give time off for a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll have a hundred papers for the dancing on my wedding day. Where will that be, Robin? On the day I can afford to pay a hundred pipers. <laughs> The day of judgment will come soon, eh? We're a hundred pipers and all and all. We're a hundred pipers and all and all. We'll up and give them a blow, blow. We're a hundred pipers and all and all. Oh, it's over the border, oh, 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 it's over the border, oh, oh, oh. We're on and we'll march to the car, oh, oh, oh. We're yells, it's hassle and all and all. We're a hundred pipers and all and all. We're a hundred pipers and all and all. We'll up and give them a blow, blow. We're a hundred pipers and all and all. Good day to you, Robin Burns. Jean. Jean Armour. Oh, that's a fine, brave song you sing. Aye, and I'll be singing it in the New World soon. What? Far away in the Isles of America. And you know your faith will be bothered to listen to my songs. Oh, you cannot leave Scotland. You must not heed what my father said. Yeah, he's right, Jean. I'm not a fit husband for you. I'm a bad farmer who can't plow a furrow straight. A maker of songs that nobody sings but me. You understand, Robin. I cannot be your bride against my father's wish. Do you see me weeping salt tears? If Jean Armour will not marry me, there's a bonnier lass who will. Oh. She's already promised to me. Another lass? Will she go with you to America? She'll go with me anywhere I go.
me before about a last name, Danny Loring. Well, I didn't tell you everything about my life. I cannot believe it, Robin. After all the bunny songs and poems you wrote to me, and the whole time you were promised to another. Oh, Jean, Jean Amour, gonna be sad. A few more weeks and I'll be across the great ocean. Maybe here to trouble you with my kisses. It was no trouble. It was no trouble for me, neither. Only remember me, Jean Amour. As the lad what took you walking in the twilight and stole a kiss or two from you in the gloaming. Remember? Gloaming in the gloaming on the bunny banks of That's the time that we love best. Oh, it's lovely roaming in the gloaming. One night in the gloaming, we were tripping side by side. He kissed me twice and asked me once if I would be his bride. She was shy, so same, but I got bold and bolder on the journey coming ahead, roaming in the gloaming on the bunny banks of mine, roaming in the gloaming where my lovely farm was when the sun has gone. It's all past now, Jean Armour. I'm bound for the Isles of America where freedom's more than a word. And all men are brothers. Or so I'm told. Will I not see you again, Robin Byrne? Aye, Scotland will not see me again, Jeannie, when the wind is in the shoulder of my sail. Farewell, Jean Armour. Farewell. <laughs> What do you want from me, lad? Are you Mr. Bart? Aye. The man who publishes books for all the world to read? The same. I have some poems here, written to me by a lad named Robert Byrne. Uh, poems are a penny a peck. It would make a bonny book, Mr. Bart. There's music in the words he writes. Here are sweetly runs his song.
a bonny ballad, lad. And you sing it as if you love the lad what wrote it. I, I love him. Will you make a book of his poems, Mr. Bark, and send him what money you can, for he needs it sorely. To the gamble. But if all his poems are the same little, I'll risk it. Lord bless you, sir. But give me your promise. What promise, lad? That Robin Burns will never know the name of the last for Brossy the Burns. Goodbye, good Jamie. My ship is waiting. I cannot see you go, Robin Burns. My bagpipes will play not but a sad song after ye leave the shores of Scotland. Jamie, each man must travel his own way, and often the paths go wide apart. But there's comfort in the knowing that every road will lead away from Scotland, also lead the way back to it again. By on bonny birds and by on bonny birds, where the sun shines bright on Loch Didn't delay me, lads. I'm on my way. Wait, Robin, there's news in the mail from Edinburgh. Naught can stay me from a voyage. Look, look. The songs of Robin Burns. My verses. Aye, yes. your verses. Printed up in a regular book like a schoolboy spell. Oh, it is a thing of beauty, Robin. Makes me wish I knew how to read. Oh, what's that? A green slip of paper? It's a bank draft for 20 pounds. Oh, Robin Burns, you're a wealthy man. <laughs> Nay, Duncan. But we'll pay my debts for most. Where did they find the verses? Oh, no miracle, that. Every Latin laugh in Ayrshire knows your song. And the letter. Where's the letter, Robin? Oh, here it is. It's from the man who made the book. Aye? He wants me to come to Edinburgh. He says the city's agog with my poems. I'm a famous man, he says. Ah, uh, you can't leave Scotland, no, Robin. No, you want to run off to the Isles of America, no. You're right, Jamie. I'll no leave Scotland. I'll take the high road to Edinburgh. <laughs> for the second act of Annie Laurie in just a moment. I couldn't have believed it. The poems of poor Rhymer Robin swept through Scotland like a blaze. In Edinburgh, it seemed that everyone wanted to meet me and to shake my hand. Do you think it turned my head? I might, perhaps. But I never forgot the last who owned my heart. And for Bonnie and Lori, I'd Well, I know her. What? How's that last? I know your Lanny Lori. You do? Who is she, then? My father knows her, too. Twas my father who published your poems. 
Then you must be Katie Bach. Miss Zane. And if you forgive a plain girl for speaking her mind, I fell in love with the first line I read of your book. For my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that sweetly play in tune. Could she be like this melody, good Robin Burns? If I had a ribbon bow to bind my hair, if I had a fancy sash, me ain't true love, he'd treat me fair. Then he would go to Ayrshire, a-logging on the rye. He'd bring me back with his two hands A very fancy prize If I was like the city born All fair and smart There's not a lad in all these parts Who'd know my heart Then I would go to Ayrshire all the law and go, I'd knock about in settlement, a wearing fur and clothes. If I had a ribbon bow to bind my hair, my red heels would go a clashing wherever my fancy should. My love would see and wish that he had taken me when he could. If I just had a ribbon bow to bind my Didn't need a ribbon boat to find your own free love. But if my love is a poet. A poet? Ah. Poets are a faithless lot. He not to do with you. You're faithful to your Annie Laurie. Ah, that's different. You think that's you're full of poems. We poems, you say. It was she who begged my father to make them into a book. And what did she look like, Katie Mark? I do only from my room at the top of the stairs. And she had a voice like a thrush in the spring. I, I must leave the city now. I must go back to Ayrshire. Why, Robin? I'm near over to find the riddle's lot. And I mean to help. Duncan, me lad. Uh, welcome home, Bobby Barnes. Have you seen Jean Armour here about? Jean Armour? Oh, she's wilted like a flower, Robin, since you went to, uh... No, I have not seen her. <laughs> Jamie, lad, put down your pipes and, and tell me if you've seen my, my Jean Armour. Nay, no, Robin, she's a stranger to the tune since she went away from Ayrshire. She's never been the same. But I hear she wanders through the rye fields all alone, marning in. The rye fields, Jamie. Then it's there I'll look for her. <laughs> Jean Amour, who was that took my poems to the publishers? I, I didn't ken. It was a lass who came by stealth at night, who sang like a thrush in springtime. It was you, Jean Amour. No. It was. It was you who turned the tide of my life. Not I. Who made a book of my songs and saved me from leaving my native hills. It was you, Jean. And if it were me, Rhyme or Robin, what matters it now? Your heart is promised to another. Another? To Annie Laurie. Jean Amour, did you never guess? There is no Annie Laurie. 
She's they one and everyone. The dream of perfection in every lottie's eye is Annie Laurie. And every lass what makes a lot to count her kisses more than her wealth. Her name is Annie Laurie, too. And if your father will hay a poet for a son, I'll kiss my Annie Laurie. And her name is Jean Amour. <laughs> Show will be back in just a minute. And our thanks to Katie Lee, who played Katie Bark, to Ted Osborne, Lamont Johnson, and Jonathan Hole, and our entire company. The authors of Annie Laurie were Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Fathers of Cub Scouts must be pretty lucky fellows, for it's easy to lose that fresh, vital way in which boys look at things. And the things they learn as Scouts are extremely important and they're growing up to be the kind of boys we want them to be. During April, Cub Scouts everywhere will take part in Cub Scout Railroad Month. And by doing this, they will learn about railroads, how they operate, what they do for the nation, how they help provide better living for all of us. This is just one way in which Cub Scouting helps teach these boys more about the world they live in. And now here again is lovely Dorothy Warren Show. Honestly, Gordon, did my Scottish accent sound a little bit Scandinavian? Oh, oh, not at all, Dorothy. But a few weeks ago when we did Song of Norway, they said my Scandinavian accent sounded a little bit Scottish. (laughs) (laughs) It was fun doing the story of Annie Laurie with you. What's on the show train next week? The wonderful lilting music of the Great Waltz. And our guest will be another Dorothy named Kirsten. Oh, it sounds like a treat, Gordon. I'll certainly be listening. Good night. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out And so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Gray can be seen starring in the Warner Brothers production, The West Point Story. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. And now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Program was transcribed. Wonderful musical listening with the telephone.